Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the prayer call. Um, it is Friday. Thank God we have made it. Um, so yeah, I was just pondering upon uh, some things I was reading in Luke, and um, I was just really caught in regards to just the journey of Jesus and his beginning and how he went through his seasons of training and preparation before being launched out. And um, the Holy Spirit just kept highlighting that to me because we are all constantly in this season of training and preparation. And, you know, sometimes it can feel a bit overwhelming. Sometimes, you know, you want to skip a step, but there are levels to the training and preparation. And I thought it was just interesting how, you know, God made sure that it was written in the scripture to show us how Jesus went through his training and preparation. And um, there were a few verses. Um, I know in Luke 2.40, uh, one thing that stood out to me was how it said, and the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And then we have in Luke 2, 52, it says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. And then a couple verses before that, we have the situation where Jesus literally um at the age of 12 wandered away um and he went basically into the temple and he was sitting with the teachers and it's interesting because here we know Jesus we know Jesus is a teacher we know he's the almighty teacher but we also have to recognize that in his young age he had to function in humility he had to be a student and, and that's important because a lot of times although we reach a level of maturity we may le reach a level of success but it's important to remember to be a student in verse 46 of chapter 2 in Luke it says now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers both listening to them and asking them questions and I think it's important to be intentional about his process because he was listening and he was asking questions. And right now in the season, we are all being challenged to be intentional about our growth, to be intentional about our training and to see in scripture that Jesus went through a similar process. It encourages me. It does. It, it reminds me that, you know, the child, when we are going through these seasons of heavy learning, it's not something that is like, it's just us. It's a part of the process. And we have the option to either engage and continue and endure and, and, and work it out to the end, walk it out to the end, or we have the opportunity to ignore it think we know it all you know um and not not be a student and uh, it's important to recognize that in Jesus remember he he's a he, he's a human version of God but even as a human version of God he made sure he was teachable he made sure he sat and he listened he made sure he asked questions he made sure that he positioned himself to grow in wisdom and stature and favor and in the grace and the, and understanding the grace of God was upon him but even though he had all this stuff embodied in him there was a learning process that had to take place and so then if you go a couple chapters over um his ministry begins at the age of 30 so that means before 30 he was training he was being built up, equipped, not just in spiritual things, but also in things in the natural as well, because he lived a life as a human being. And so then in chapter four, 
that's where we see a test. And, you know, if you're, if you pay attention to, to words and how things are written in chapter four, verse one, it says, then Jesus being filled with the Holy spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness. He was led by the spirit. Now this was after he had been baptized by John the Baptist and the um, Holy spirit came upon him like a dove. And he was drawn into the wilderness. I thought that was important because there are moments where there's an unlocking in our spirit. There's a growth and we're like, yes, I know, you know, the Holy Spirit has taken me to a new level. I know he's, he's increased me. But the thing is, we have to understand that after he was baptized, after he was increased, after he was taken to that next level, he was taken to the wilderness by the spirit and so i think sometimes we 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 don't like the fact that we have those wilderness seasons we don't like the fact that we have those tests and trials sometimes but the thing is sometimes that's what's necessary because it's a part of our training it's a part of our building it's a part of of us understanding that we are officially equipped to go to the next level and so I thought it was uh, really significant because um, some of you may have read this before, but when the enemy was tempting him, now, first of all, he fasted. And I know some people have unhealthy views about fasting. They don't understand it, but fasting really does posture your spirit to be prepared for these types of temptations. It says, being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing. And afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And so the thing is, when we when we starve our flesh, it challenges us to lean heavily on the spirit. Because then the spirit takes control. The spirit drives things. And so this is not, you know... Um, you know, just to say, oh, fast, but this is so you understand the depth of what was happening with Jesus and understanding that Jesus did it. He went through it. You know, sometimes people just look at the end. They just say, Jesus performed miracles, signs, wonders. He healed the lost and he healed the sick and he brought the lost back to God. Yes, he did. But we also have to understand he still had to live life like a human being. And that is why we revere him so much because he endured everything like there's not one thing that he did not endure and we have to remember that because sometimes you can try to separate yourself your own situation and minimize what you're capable of because the simple fact you're like oh that's Jesus but we have to understand Jesus himself he had to sacrifice he had to break down his flesh through the Holy Spirit he had to go through being filled with the Holy Spirit. And so here we have these temptations. And one thing that was beautiful was that as the enemy tried to skew God's word, and I say skew because he was taking a lot of stuff out of context. He was trying to make Jesus see himself as a God versus the just versus the son of god or someone submitted to god he kept trying to make him do things that would have taken away the grace that god had upon his life but thankfully jesus because he had been a student because he was one who listened who asked questions who took being in consecration seriously he was equipped to respond with God's word. And mind you, in the New Testament, it doesn't diminish the Old Testament. Jesus himself used the words of the, the late prophets and teachers of the Old Testament that was inspired by God. And he used those words to defeat the enemy's temptation. And that's exactly what God calls us to do. When the enemy says something, he tries to attack us with something. He tries to, um, he tries to confuse us. We are supposed to be so he heavily into the word 
that we know how to respond according to the word of God. And so I was just meditating upon just this process that Jesus was going through, you know, because we see firsthand how, how he had to go through growth. He had to mature and it took work. It's not just something you sit back and say, oh, God's going to do it. No, like be intentional. He was intentional. Those days that he was away from his parents as a kid and they found him in the temple. Those are like the moments we have with God. You know, when we just go away with him and we're heavily listening, studying, hungry, trying to understand more about him and his way, his will for our lives. And so he goes through all these temptations in chapter four, in Luke four, and every temptation, he's able to combat it with the word of God. And then verse 13, it says, now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Now we know the enemy is not going to stop messing with us, but at least we, we can fight those battles when he does come around. And so then he continued on, and that's where we see Isaiah, what Isaiah prophesied in regards to Jesus. And in verse 18, Luke 4, 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? Now, I'm going to pause there because what was significant to me was the fact that this was a pro prophetic word spoken about him, what he would come to do upon coming to this earth. And notice that revelation, that reminder was shared after he himself overcame some temptations. It was like an announcement to the people of like, I am here. Here I am. This is what I'm called to do. Now, unfortunately, we do recognize if you keep reading down, you know, that familiarity, <laughs> they, they saw him only as Joseph's son, but it's amazing how after all he had gone through, they only saw him as Joseph's son. And even after him announcing himself through the prophetic word of God, they, they did not take heed to what was being said about who he is. Nevertheless, though, he continued to do what God has called him to do. And so, you know, he continued to move in miracles. I know in this chapter, he also talks about the deliverance um, from an unclean demon for a man who had a spirit within him. And, you know, how he just simply said, be quiet and come out of him. Now that's important as well because he had the authority to do that. And where does the authority come from? It comes from spending time with God. It comes from being a student of God. It comes from understanding how to utilize the word of God. The word of God is not just something, it's, don't treat it just like a book you read to feel good. No, the word of God is alive and living. It is to be utilized. It combats things. It is a weapon a warfare. So understand the power and the authority of the word. And it's always amazing to see how Jesus understood that even in his position. And so I just want to encourage you because I recognize that this is a heavy season of learning, studying, growing, um, being tested. And it's not easy, but the thing is, it's, it's, it's for our good and we will see the fruit of the labor, but we must be intentional about following what God has called us to follow. We must be intentional 
about allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us, to guide us, to lead us, to build us, to equip us. We must be intentional about sitting, listening, asking questions. Like don't, I know Mel mentioned it yesterday. Like don't be wise in your own eyes in this season. It's okay to ask someone that you might feel like is more mature. It's okay to ask someone who they may be younger, but if you notice they are more mature spiritually, you know, I can just imagine seeing, seeing Jesus as a kid in the temple and thinking to yourself, this is a kid, but how foolish would, would many have been if they would not have even considered asking him questions? You know, he was so full of insight, revelation and wisdom. And that's some, that's a mistake we can make. Sometimes we can think, oh, well, they just got saved yesterday. Oh, well, they're not mature. Their age is, you know, not there. Or, man, they haven't gone through anything. But the thing is, you never know what God has planted inside a person that will help take you to the next level in him. And so we want to be mindful of that. And so I just, the Holy Spirit was just highlighting, just be intentional about being the student. Be intentional about learning, growing. Be intentional about understanding the word, being consecrated, because those tests are coming. They're, they're not going to stop. Um, like it said, the enemy departed from Jesus until an opportune time. And that implies he did, he just went away until he could try to come up against him. And that's another thing, another reason why we cannot, that's another reason why we cannot allow ourselves to become too comfortable. It's easy to say, I passed this test. I'm good. I, you know, we can get complacent. And, and the minute we get complacent, what does the enemy do? He's like, oh, I got it. Let me, let me sweep in, swoop in. And that's when he starts playing the mind games and stuff. And that's when he starts trying to throw people off. And so that's why it's just so important to make this thing a lifestyle, to make this thing a daily practice. Don't just come, don't just come to God for the feels. Like intentionally seek him to know more about him, that you may grow, that you may have an understanding of who he is first. Because in that, that's when he gives the understanding of who we are and what he called us to do. And so I just want to challenge us all. Like, I don't know everybody's um, lifestyle, but just be be intentional about committing to praying every day, seeking his word every day. Even if you're just meditating on one scripture, constantly going back to him saying, Holy Spirit, speak to me. Help me understand what this is saying. Fasting. Be intentional. Every week. Start start saying to yourself, okay, I'm going to have this day as my fasting day or these couple of days as my fasting day. And even if you wake up in the morning and the Holy Spirit's like, I need you to fast, just do it. Don't sit here trying to rationalize or say, oh, I didn't prepare. Oh, I don't feel like it. Like, who are we to tell God <laughs> what we feel like doing and don't feel like doing, especially after reading what Jesus Christ went through, you know? from the day from before he was born there was a hit on Jesus and so his whole life embodied him having to function according to God's will even by the hands of his parents obedience and so just seeing things from that perspective it should cause a hunger it should make your spirit leap it should make you want to be more intentional because of the simple fact that we have been given uh, the grace of God. We have been given authority and power from God, but we have to be intentional about fostering those giftings. We have to be intentional about fostering that relationship. And that only comes through intimacy. And so, you know, if you have time, I definitely encourage you to go back and just read those few chapters. I'm pretty sure in some of the other versions, um, because the gospels are different variations of of similar stories but it comes from different perspectives and so it's always good to kind of read the varying 
um, ways that's described. But right now, I know I'm the Lord has called me to meditate on Luke. And so um, I just encourage you to kind of just pay attention to Jesus. That's that's one good thing about the Gospels. If you're not very biblically sound in things, one thing about the Gospels is that it helps us to understand Jesus, how he functioned, how he flowed, how he how he made moves, how he was taught. What did his consecration look like? What did his training look like? And it brings awareness to the fact that Jesus is God, but he also functioned as man. And that gives us no excuse to feel like we don't need to do anything in order to move to that next level. And this is not being religious. This is not um, projecting something on you. This is almost like a, a heads up. Because what I don't want you to do is to feel like there's nothing for you to do or you don't have to do it. God's just going to miraculously do it. There are tangible, practical things that God has us to do. And if Jesus himself had to do it, then guess what? We are not exempt from it. And so I just pray that you are encouraged to seek the Lord about what is he asking of you. And even in this, you know, being intentional about hearing his voice, you know, um, we do have a lot of teachers that we can listen to and, you know, they're very biblically sound, but one thing we never want to do is allow a voice of man to become louder than the voice of God. And that can happen so subtly, um, you know, and that's where idolatry comes in. And if that happens, God will sh shut the mouth of the one speaking so that way he can ensure that you get back on track to listening to him. And so um, even though, yes, there are people that we're inspired by, we cannot, we cannot utilize that as a substitute for hearing God's voice for ourselves. So that's why when we pray in the mo morning and we have those moments of just being silent, it's important because we have to train our ear to hear from the Holy Spirit. So even in those quiet moments, you may be driving to work and you may turn the music off, turn the sermon off, and you may just sit with the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, speak and allow him to speak to you. Um, because the thing is, when we posture ourselves to hear, that is when he's willing to speak. And when I look at Jesus and him going to that temple, it just says a lot about the fact that he was hungry. He had a willingness to sit, listen, to ask questions. And we want to do that with God. You know, we want to be able to say we have a personal relationship with God. And so those are a couple of things I'll just be praying for us today because the tests are not going to stop. The temptation of the enemy is not going to stop. In fact, God will allow some of those things to happen for the sake of ensuring that we are equipped and operating and functioning in those things. So I know for some people, it can be hard for the battles. You can get tired of, you know, fighting the warfare and things. And I mean, I know there are a couple of us, The it, it can be tiring, but the reality is, is that God has given us strength. He has given, there's a reason he needs us to go through some of these things especially when you know the calling on your life may be a bit more grander than someone else. It doesn't mean it's better, but it's a matter of understanding that if your call is heavier, then there's a heavy, heavier level of training. And it has to be that way. So that way you will be able to be sustained whenever you get to that level. And so that's why it's not important to not compare, you know, don't compare yourself to someone else you will find yourself in this space of resentment if you start looking at other people and you're like, man, they, you know, it, it seems like they they have to do this, this, and this, and but I don't want to do that. You know, it's, it's, it's just important to understand and remember what God has called you to and understand that the greater the calling, the greater the task, the assignment, the greater the consecration, the greater the obedience, the greater the um, intimacy that is necessary. So when we look at Jesus, you know, we may be like, man, Jesus went through a lot. He had to do this, this, and this. But do you remember 
the call on his life. Like he died for all of us. That's not, that's no, that's no light task. And so it, it challenges us. If we look at him and what he did, what he was called to, and we see what he had to endure. Oh, we know, you know, we, we aren't anything anymore special to where we don't, we ourselves don't need to endure some things. So, you know, I'm really just praying for your strength, for wisdom, um, for a greater functioning through the Holy Spirit, uh, for our ears, so we can hear, so we can see, and so we can obey what God is asking of us. Uh, because like I said, when I was just reading, I was just like, wow, like Jesus himself went through all this stuff was taken into the wilderness. You know, we feel like we fall into our wilderness season, not realizing God most likely needed that for us to develop and be tested and mature into a, in a different level. And so um, we're going to pray in the spirit for a little bit um, together. Uh, if, if you can pray in the spirit, you know, just unmute. If you don't have your heavenly language, just begin to speak to just call out Jesus name because, um, you know, I'm very adamant. I do believe praying in the Holy Spirit. It helps to activate and commune with the Holy Spirit in a language that cannot be um, interfered with through our own thoughts, our own flesh or with the enemy. So we're just going to take a few minutes, unmute, pray in the spirit. And then um, I'll continue with prayer. So if I could have book of shake it, I back at the book of shake. If I could have book of shake it, I back at the book of shake it, I had a book of shake. If I could have book of shake, if I could have book of shake, if I could have book of shake it, I back at the book of shake it. Shakeri <laughs> Shake it, I'm not going to get a bit of 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 a bit of
Hallelujah. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we humbly come before you. Lord, to honor you, to praise your holy name, Lord, to glorify you. Father God, we thank you that you are majestic in all your ways, Heavenly Father, that you are wonderful, wondrous, Lord God, that you are marvelous. You are the counselor, Lord. You are the healer. You are the deliverer, Lord God. Father God, before we even go further in prayer, Lord, we just silence every unclean spirit, Lord God. Father God, we call forth, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will come and shift, Lord God, things in our mindset, Heavenly Father, that, Lord God, there will be no distraction in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father God, we cast out every unclean spirit, Lord, that would try to come and be a distraction in this moment of seeking your face, of praying to you, of allowing the Holy Spirit to rule, reign, and have dominion, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that in this season, you are challenging us, Lord, to pivot, to move according to your instructions, to be purified, to be cleansed. Lord God, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you are daily challenging us to examine ourselves, Lord God, that you are allowing the Holy Spirit to examine our hearts, Lord God, to reveal the wicked areas of our hearts that need to be removed and stripped out of us. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you that you are challenging us, Lord, to self-assess, to be self-aware, Lord God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are opening our eyes. You are removing the scales from our eyes. You are unplugging our ears. You are fine-tuning our hearing. You are challenging us to obey without delay. Father God, I bind that spirit of rationalization where we sit and we try to rationalize your instructions. Father God, we are in a season of ultimate and full surrender, Lord God. Father God, we call upon you in the mighty name of Jesus to stretch us, Lord God, that Heavenly Father, we will obey without delay, Lord. You are just calling out for us so much for us to obey without delay, obey without delay. Father God, you are reminding us we don't have to know the why, but Lord, we simply need to know you so we walk in trust, so we walk in obedience, knowing that what you ask of us, Lord God, is what we need. It is for our protection. It is the best place for us to be within your will, Lord God. Father God, I thank you that you are building up your army, Lord, that you are building up your, your sons and daughters to be your vessel, Lord God. I thank you that you are training us up, Lord, that you have postured us to be like Jesus, to be students, Lord. Father God, I thank you that you are challenging us to engage in conversation with you, to engage in learning and gleaning with you, Lord God. Lord, let us not forsake those intimate moments that we can have with each other where we sit in silence and we just simply hear your voice, Lord God. Father God, I pray against the spirit of idolatry. Father God, let us not allow any individual to become, to have a voice louder than your voice, Heavenly Father. Although they may have good intentions, it may be a mentor, it may be a spiritual parent, it may be a, a family member, a spiritual family member, whatever the case may be, Lord, help us to understand the fine line between idolatry, Lord God, and simply just taking heed to your word, Lord. 
Lord, I just pray that you will begin to, to shift our relationships, Heavenly Father, in a way that there is a healthy balance of ensuring that you are your voice is louder, that you come first, and that anyone else is support based upon what you have ordained for us to receive, Lord God. Father God, I just thank you that you are challenging us to walk in a greater level of humility, Lord. I thank you that you are challenging us, Lord God, to walk in a greater level of honor. And Lord, I thank you that you are challenging us, Heavenly Father, to take heed to what is happening, to have the eyes to see, to recognize those those things, even within ourselves when we are shifting and we're going a little bit left. Lord, I thank you that you are that voice that redirects us, Lord God. Heavenly Father, I also pray that you begin to, to stir, stir our spirits, Lord. One thing that your word shows us is that when Jesus Christ was baptized by John the Baptist, you allowed the Holy Spirit to fill him. And that's what ignited a greater level of your presence within him, Lord. Father God, many of us have had encounters and experiences with you. But Lord God, we just call upon you to not allow the flame to burn away, Lord God. We call upon you to let us stay on fire for you, Heavenly Father. Lord, let there be a stirring, a hunger, and a thirst for your presence, for your word, to do your will, to fulfill your purpose for our lives, Lord God. Father God, we break off every spirit of complacency, Lord God. Every spirit of pride that makes us think that we're too good to submit. We're too good to sit at the feet of certain people to listen and learn. We're too good to, to sacrifice and to, to, um, to yield our will. Father God, we bind and break that mindset in the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. And I pray that you just continue to surround us with like-minded, hungry women, Lord God who will serve as accountability as we walk this journey with you, Heavenly Father, as we seek your face, Heavenly Father, that none of us would be standing alone, Heavenly Father, when the temptation of the enemy comes, Lord. And Lord, even with understanding your word, I pray for a greater understanding, interpretation through the Holy Spirit. I pray for retention of the word of God, Lord, that, we, that the word becomes so heavily written upon our heart that, Lord, we know through the Holy Spirit exactly what to say for various situations we may encounter, for very temptations that the enemy may give us through skewed use of his word. Father God, let us not get caught up in trying to be, quote unquote, famous or well-known Heavenly Father. For we know that the enemy likes to utilize notoriety and fame and money and all the things of this world to try to throw people off but lord we will be the immovable ones we will be the ones who to choose to walk in alignment with your will and your way lord god father god i thank you that you are increasing us with your wisdom i thank you that you are increasing us lord god just with a greater level of stature and favor lord god I thank you that we are not forsaken in any capacity, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Lord God, that this is a building season, Lord. And although we may think building, meaning in terms of what we build, but Lord, you are building within us. There is a version of ourselves that has yet to be revealed that you are molding and cultivating within us because we say yes. So Lord, I thank you for our yes. I thank you that we have the opportunity to say yes to you every single day. Father God, I just declare and decree, Lord, that even in this month, Lord, there we go deeper. We go deeper, we go deeper, we go deeper. Father God, there is no regressing. Father God, you take us from glory to glory, Lord God. We take us to you take us, Lord, from increase to increase. And Father God, that just doesn't go for a tangible material things. That goes for our spirit, man. That Father God, we will walk in the oneness of who you are, we would walk in the greatness of who you are and what you have called us to do and to be, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, I thank you that this is still a stretching season. Yes, we crossed over from a new month, but Father God, you are so strategic that there's so much that has to be done collectively as we go about our days, Heavenly Father. 
Lord, there's a building. Lord, you are preparing us for something that we may not even know all the answers to, but Lord, we have said yes and we choose to go through the training. It's almost like the the military when they sign up if or a branch of the military and it's like you have to go away for training for boot camp. Lord, that is what you are calling of us and it doesn't end. We keep going. There are multiple check-ins because we have to be sustained. So Father God, I thank you. It may be hard. It may not feel good, but Lord, I thank you. I thank you because you are building strength and endurance in us. You are building intimacy with us, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I thank you that we ourselves have been postured to hold each other accountable. Lord, I pray that you humble our hearts and our ears to where you can utilize us to speak life into each other, Lord God. Father God, I thank you that you give us the, the words of grace and mercy and you give us wisdom and how we articulate things with each other, Lord God. We thank you that this is a community that you have established, Heavenly Father, for us to be okay with speaking life, with speaking instruction. Father God, I pray against blind spots, Lord. I pray against those spots in our lives, Lord, where we are ignorant to the to the ways of the enemy out of familiarity with things in our past. Father God, help us in the mighty name of Jesus to, to see and recognize those things that are not of God, those habits that are not of God, those traits, Heavenly Father. And Lord, allow us to have ears to hear when you decide to either speak directly or utilize your vessel to help us come into awareness of things that we need to, to shift, Lord. And I pray for boldness, Heavenly Father. I pray that no one on this call allows fear to muzzle them in the name of Jesus. We just declare and decree, Lord, that all yokes of muzzling have been broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I declare and decree, Lord, that there's a confidence in you. There's not an arrogance, but there's a confidence in Christ. There's a confidence in knowing that the Lord is with us and that we hear from him. And therefore, we have the ability to seek out his wisdom and to obey and do and say the thing that needs to be said for the deliverance, for the healing of the people that God has called to our voices, Heavenly Father. So Lord, help us to not dwell on what we see in the natural heavenly father but help us in the mighty name of jesus lord god to be mindful to be cognizant to be intentional lord god about making sure we understand lord god those things from a spiritual perspective heavenly father lord i thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you for your favor. I thank you, Lord, that you mold and you build us. I thank you that we hear from you. I thank you that we can be confident in you. I thank you that your word is written upon our heart, that every scripture that we read, Heavenly Father, it feeds our spirit, man. It feeds, it, it shifts our soul. It brings our mind, will, and emotion into subjection of the Holy Spirit, Lord God. So Lord, I thank you. That, Lord, even in the season, as you are drawing many of us into these wilderness seasons for the sake of drawing nearer to you and being more equipped for where you're taking us, Father, I pray against every spirit of comparison. Lord God, it doesn't matter what someone else has to do, but Father God, we will respect and honor the fact that you need to do different types of training for each of us based upon where we are going, Lord. So Lord, help us to see each other as supporters, as assets to each other and not competitors, Lord God. Lord, help us to not allow any form of division to cause us to push away those that you have called to walk up, walk alongside of us, Lord God. And that just goes for the body of Christ in general, Lord. Help us in the mighty name of Jesus to not become so captivated and caught up on self that Lord God, we don't recognize that you are calling us to function in oneness, not just with you, but among each other, Lord. So Father God, I just thank you for the shift that you that's taking place within our hearts and our minds. Lord, I thank you that our posture, we are, po we are being postured, Lord God, to fulfill the will that you have for us, Lord. So thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the testimony of Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we can connect and relate, Heavenly Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for you have not forsaken us. You give us everything that we need 
that we may build and, and fulfill the things that you have called us to do, Lord. So I bless your holy name, Lord God. And Lord, I just continue to speak healing over everyone's body, Lord God, that there that the attacks on health would be destroyed right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. That Lord God, even in the voice, in the feet, Lord God, there would be no delay. Because one thing, when it, when when the voice is attacked and when the feet are attacked, that is an attack against your your mobilization. That is an attack against what the Lord wants to do in and through you. So, Lord, I just cover everyone's voice. Father God, that there will be a breaking away of anything that functions as a muzzle, whether it be fear, whether it be control. Father, we destroy it and cast it out in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And we declare and decree, Lord, that we have a voice that is strong and ready to speak the word of God and ready to declare the word of God. Heavenly Father, I cover all of our feet. Father God, as you have called us to go into places and lands and to tread through environments, Heavenly Father, and the enemy does not want that. So, Lord, we bind and rebuke every spirit, every attack on our feet, Heavenly Father. Every spirit of infirmity is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare and decree that we walk in the healing that has been given to us through Jesus Christ, that we are covered by the blood of Jesus from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, Lord God, that Heavenly Father, every attempt to try to create tension physically or mentally, Lord God, has been halted and blocked in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father God, I thank you that in this season, Heavenly Father, that you are training us to function holistically for you, that our whole being is healed, Lord God, that we are healed spiritually, we are healed financially, we are healed relationally, we are healed mentally and emotionally, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. We honor you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the challenges, for the test, for the push, Lord God, because we know it is not in vain, for there is a building and equipping that is taking place within each and every one of us. Lord, I thank you that you are creating opportunities for us to be your vessel. Lord, whether it be at work, whether it be with family, Lord, we thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for softening the hearts of those who need to know you, Heavenly Father, for we know that you have the power and the authority to do such a thing. So, Lord God, we reverence you. We honor you, Lord. Let us never, ever, ever do anything that dishonors you, Lord God. Let us be intentional about acknowledging who you are, acknowledging what you offer, what you do, Lord God, and acknowledging you as our Lord and Savior. Lord, we praise your holy name, and I just thank you that who we are today is nothing compared to who we are becoming Lord God, there's so much you're building inside of us. And I'm just grateful, Lord, that we can observe each other, that we can watch each other, that we can hold each other accountable to ensure that we walk according to the will and the way of our Heavenly Father. So, Lord, I thank you um, that there, we are safe, that everyone traveling, Lord God, whether it be by plane, by car, by by walking, um, or by boat, Father God, no matter the, the the form of transportation, Lord, I just thank you that there is protection, that everything is working properly, Lord. I pray for those who are um, in seasons of rest, Lord, that you teach us what rest looks like and you help us recognize rest means not, does not mean doing nothing, but it is a, it is a posture of being at peace and being in a healthy space spiritually emotionally mentally despite the things that are taking place lord god and father god i just thank you lord for those who are in who are walking into new seasons walking into new endeavors father god i thank you that you are posturing us to to grow in those things lord god you are posturing kingdom assignments to help us those destiny connections those divine connections lord god to help us to see the fulfillment of the promise and the plan that you have for our lives lord god father god we break off every spirit of suspicion every spirit of skepticism every spirit of of uh, being logical heavenly father or reasoning that hinders our ability to see through the eyes of the holy spirit to see and believe through a supernatural lens versus our natural lens so lord i thank you that you are shifting things in and through us lord and around us we give you all the honor and the glory and the power in the mighty name of jesus amen amen so thank you all for joining prayer um 
And, you know, I just pray that everybody just spends more time seeking the face of God, listening to him, allowing him to speak. Take, make sure you have your journals. Make sure you're writing things down. Make sure you're just pausing, just sitting in the silence of, of, of his presence and allow him to speak to you um, because he is our father. He loves to talk to us. He actually is always here with us. He's actually just waiting for us to listen to him. So God bless you all. I love y'all. Bye. Bye. Have a blessed day. Amen. Have a blessed day, ladies. Bye.